Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to create shortcuts to select adjacent ranges. So what I mean by that is here I have a set of data, and I have some cells selected in column D here, and I might want to move the selection over to column E, the same number of cells in column E or column F, or to the left in column C. And so I have a very simple set of macros that will do this, and I've assigned those macros to both keyboard shortcuts and buttons up here in a custom ribbon, my My Macros ribbon. You can see I have these move buttons right here. So if I press move right, that will move my selection to the right. I can continue to press that to move to the right, or I can press move left to move the selection over to the left. And I also have keyboard shortcuts assigned, and the keyboard shortcut in this case is Alt plus the right arrow key to move to the right. Alt left arrow will move over to the left. And then this also works with rows. So if I select row two here, again, I could press my down arrow button to move the selection down or up, and then I've used the keyboard shortcut Shift Alt down arrow to move the selection down, Shift Alt up to move the selection up. And this will also work when you have multiple rows or columns selected. So if I just hold Shift down arrow now to select a few uh, rows here, and then Shift Alt down arrow, that's going to move my selection down or move the selection back up. So of course there are a lot of uses for this, but one very common way you might use this is if you're uh, trying to select a column here and it contains blanks, a lot of times what we'll do is first go to this column that does not contain blanks, hold Control Shift and hit down arrow to select that entire column, and now we can use those Alt plus arrow keys, so I could say Alt right to select this entire column here that does contain blanks, or I could go Alt left to also select this column that contains some blank cells. And I have a whole other video that explains how to create a keyboard shortcut to select a column that does contain blanks, or we can even use an Excel table and use the control space keyboard shortcut there. So in this video, we're just going to focus on this shortcut that will allow us to move the selection left, right, up, or down. So let's go ahead and take a look at the macro that makes this all possible. We'll go to the Developer tab here and open the Visual Basic Editor. And I have these, uh, it's actually a series of macros here that I'll explain. And I have them stored in my personal macro workbook. You can see I'm in the personal macro workbook here. And then in one of the modules, the select range module within my personal macro workbook. And this allows us to run these macros on any open workbook. So we can use those keyboard shortcuts or those buttons on any workbook we have open in the computer or on the computer. And I have a whole other video series that also explains how to set up your personal macro workbook and how to create those custom ribbons with the buttons. And I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. And so, like I said, we have a series of four macros here that do the selection for us. We'll first start with this one here, which is moving the selection right one column. And really, it's just one line of code here. Very simple macro. And this is the line of code that's doing all the work. And what it's doing is starting with the selection or the selected cells, and then using the offset property to offset it one column to the right. So the offset property, if we just type here range.offset, we can tab into that open the parentheses, we'll see the offset property has two parameters, the row offset and the column offset. And this just allows us to specify a number of rows or columns that we want to do the offset or perform the offset to move that selection. And we'd use negative numbers to either move it up or to the left. So I'll go ahead and delete that line there. Control Y is a keyboard shortcut to do that. And so again, that line of code just selects or takes the selection, offsets it one column to the right, and then selects that range. So very simple macro here. The on air resume next here uh, just adds some air handling in case we have the first column or the last column in the worksheet selected and we try and go one column to the right or left, which would be outside of the end of the worksheet. This will just prevent any errors from coming up in our macro and just bypass those errors. And then so we just have three other macros for the different directions here. Of course, we can go left one column and we'd be offsetting uh, the column offset negative one there to go to the left. Down here, we have uh, down one row and we'd have the row offset equal to one, uh, column offset equal to zero. And then going up, we'd have that row offset equal to negative one. 
And so those are the four macros. And again, you could first, one thing you can do is assign buttons within the ribbon, custom macro buttons to these macros here. And that's what I've done. If we jump back over to Excel in this custom my macros tab, I have all these buttons assigned to those different macros right there. And again, I have a whole nother video series that explains exactly how to set that up. So I won't go into that here, but I'll put a link below the video. Now the keyboard shortcuts is, are a little bit different. So I'll go back to, into uh, the VB editor here. And up here, I have another macro uh, called add move selection keyboard shortcuts. And this will assign the keyboard shortcuts for each macro. And I'm using this macro because we're using some custom keyboard shortcuts with the alt key. And we can't set up set this up within the macro options window for the alt key. It has to start with a control key. So if you want the shortcut to start with a different key, like the alt key or the shift key, then we can use a macro for that. And we're using this application on key method here to set up the uh, keyboard shortcut to call the macro. So this, in this case here, this is using the percent symbol, which uh, stands for the alt key here for the on key method. And then this uh, is the right arrow key that represents the right arrow key. So when we run this line of code here, we're just saying set up a keyboard shortcut for alt right arrow. And when the user presses alt right arrow, it's going to call this macro here, which is the move selection right column macro, this macro right down here. And then the rest of these lines of code up here just do the same thing for the different macros. And here we've added the plus symbol, which represents the shift key in the on key method. And so this uh, keyboard shortcut would be shift, alt, down arrow, shift, alt, up arrow. And the reason I use that is because alt, down arrow is already used within Excel to bring up the, fil uh, I'm sorry, the data validation menu or to select from a list. So we don't want to use that keyboard shortcut. So instead we're going to use shift, alt, down arrow. Now this macro here, the add move selection keyboard shortcuts macro needs to be run every time you open Excel. It just needs to be run once, uh, but it'll need to be run every time you open Excel to set up these keyboard shortcuts. And we can actually do that automatically or have it done automatically for us uh, with the workbook open event, which if we go to our personal macro workbook, expand out this Microsoft Excel objects folder. We have the this workbook module right here. Just double click that. And I've added the workbook open event here that's just going to call that macro right there. Every time the personal macro workbook opens, it'll just call that macro right there, which will set up those keyboard shortcuts. So we never have to worry about running that manually. Every time we open Excel now, you come uh, open Excel for the first time for the day and you can just jump into your spreadsheet. Those are already work and I can hit alt right, alt left to use those keyboard shortcuts to call those macros. And another advantage here, since the uh, macro is just selecting cells, we don't lose the undo history when we call that macro. So everything should work fine and you can use this macro anytime. So I hope that helps. I also want to give a big shout out to Ed, who's a member of the Excel Campus community for inspiring this idea and this macro. I think it's one that I'll use all the time. So thanks, Ed. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.